Welcome back everyone. Today we are publishing on Tuesday since we have been a little bit busy last week and so the portfolio update comes a little bit later. But let's see real quick what has happened last week at least in our portfolio. So as you can see now since inception we are at around plus 21.6%. The market has been very happy last week and also the S&P 500 since September the 1st more or less when we started to invest in this YouTube portfolio is at plus 19%. The new thing here is that we have purchased four more shares of Pfizer. So this modifies a little bit our cost basis, which is now $31, around $31 per share. And now this position is at minus 13%. So it's the worst position for now in our portfolio since the Estelluder companies, which for many weeks had been also very close to minus 30%, now it's around minus 7.7%. The largest position, of course, is still Meta. And then we have still a pretty large amount in short-term bonds, around 44% of our portfolio. If we switch real quick to Finviz, we can actually see also better what has happened last week. And we can see that Nvidia, for example, gained 7%, Meta 6%, Amazon almost plus 5%. And overall, you can see pretty much all green in the market. And of course, if we go here in the top right corner, we can actually see that Pfizer had lost minus 5.5% and this is why we were able to buy four new shares because we usually have these orders at lower and lower prices for the companies that we like. And finally, also here we can see the usual Estelloder companies that is now slowly recovering. And in fact, last week they gained around 6% in stock price and this is why in our portfolio actually the position doesn't look too bad anymore. And before now switching to some macro topics that every now and then we just like to look at and talk about. We also wanted to thank our few patrons that have been with us for most of the year. There has been a new one pretty recently. So now we are at a total of eight patrons and three patrons are actually the paying patrons on our account. We're pretty happy about it. These are of course small numbers, but we are growing little by little. And so we hope that 2024 will also bring more patrons to our account. As we saw in our portfolio, most of the positions are now in the green and some of the positions that we entered just in a small amount, like for example, Microsoft are up and frankly, an insane amount, like 70%. And that was, of course, not something that we foresaw. We entered just a little, assuming that the stock would go down more. While now we can see that there are booms almost everywhere. And for example, in the case of the Estee Lauder companies, we recovered most of the ground that we lost in the past few months. And of course, as Matt was pointing at, there's some macro reason that, of course, we cannot forecast, but affected these results. And the macro situation is quite interesting, actually. And my reflections are as follows. So first of all, there are signals that are one against the other. And uh, in particular, there are signs that unemployment is not going up in the US, but core inflation is not also going down while inflation is going slightly down. So this is what I guess triggered the Fed to become a little bit more dovish or this is what the market interpreted, what the FOMC members were trying to say or at least Powell was trying to say. In Europe, the situation is slightly different. So the BOE, the ECB, and the Swiss National Bank held rates constant. So also the Fed did that, but they did not hint at any cut. They seemed to be like the Fed a few months ago. So probably they are lagging or the situation economically is just different. Why not just bank, for example, in Norway actually hiked interest rates at 4.5%. So there are still developed economies where the central bank is hiking rates. Many times in macro, I hear that in 2008, what helped save the global economies that the Chinese stimulated spending and economies globally. And this is not possible this time, basically because the Chinese are still in either recovery or the recession is still going on over there. So they don't have enough room to cut because of the yuan. So basically, there will be no help, at least in the near future, because of that. The ECB is also holding rates while parts of Europe are in recession. So, for example, Germany. 
and some other parts of Europe are not in recession in the sense of the GDP growth being negative, but the PMI, the Purchasing Managers Index, is deeply negative. For example, in France, it's at 42. So even though the GDP growth is uh, not negative in France, we have signs of weakness that is very pronounced. So overall, even though the economies are not synchronous, the market in the US took off last week, mostly because of Powell message or how the market interpreted it. And so for us, what does it mean? So basically either there's really a soft landing and so inflation goes down, the economy continues to grow and everything does not end in a crash. And in that case, our short-term bonds will be deployed in some of the opportunities that we are seeing and that we are relatively cautious right now and we don't want to invest that portion of the portfolio in those opportunities. But we see that there are opportunities besides, of course, the Magnificent Seven. Almost all of them are very pricey at this time. So we would probably not invest any of the funds in those stocks. But there are other opportunities that we could deploy our money in. Or actually a recession comes and so risk assets get reprised and therefore we will have many opportunities to deploy our short-term bonds. Now there's also another case that right now is probably less likely but still it's a good idea to keep in mind that is a second wave of inflation and in that case probably if there are no stocks that fall enough for us to invest in them, then it will just mean that our short-term bonds continue to get a, a higher and higher yield because essentially at that point the central banks are forced to continue hiking rates. So this is a possibility that probably is not among the most likely, but still it's possible. And so we think about all the scenarios and so this is a possible scenario and in that case probably if stocks continue to become more and more expensive while short-term bonds continue to deliver a higher and higher yield, probably we will just continue with the portfolio as we have done in the past uh, basically year. And so we will continue to get these coupons in the short-term bonds ETF that actually is accumulating, so it just goes up automatically. And then we are going to continue to deploy very selectively whatever funds we have available. Cool. And this concludes today's video and today's update on the portfolio. Very likely this will be the last video before Christmas. And so we also wanted to say Merry Christmas to those of you who are going to celebrate Christmas, but also Happy Holidays in just in general, if you're just taking a break or you have some time to spend with your family, friends, etc. And this also means that we are going to publish again before New Year's Eve but after the Christmas holiday. So we are just going to take a few days off. We're going to have a video probably on the 30th or around there. And we are going to talk about our plans for 2024, exactly as we did last year. And maybe also, you know, talk again about the market. In the meantime, take some time off. Enjoy this time with your family and friends. Hopefully this is a possibility for you. And we're going to see you very soon. Bye bye.